Hello everyone, Squee here, and welcome back to the third episode of the Curse of the Crimson Throne podcast slash YouTube series. Really gotta clean up what I'm gonna call this. But, welcome back. Uh, I'm glad to see you guys are enjoying this. I'm getting lots of feedback, lots of comments, and um, quite a few downloads for the podcast. A lot bigger response than I expected, which is fantastic. Um, I know this is going up on a Monday again. I think I'm going to make Monday the day it goes up for any number of reasons, but not the least of which being the last two times have been on a Monday. Um, but I think I'm going to try and change the actual date it goes up to Monday. Um this is the uh, second part of our first session, and luckily the last episode that has that weird kind of echoey issues with Arlen and, um, and uh, you you know, you saw last episode, it's not too bad, and this is the last episode that has it. Next episode will be a lot better quality audio uh, all around, and a lot less editing on my part. Thank Zeus? Sure, he seems like a nice one. Um... <laughs> But uh, yes, uh, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I just want to say I'm really glad that you guys are very thoroughly enjoying this. I do want to let you guys uh, who are listening to this, uh, the podcast, know that um, if ever you want to see one of the pictures that, that we talk about, uh, the description for each episode should be in, I mean, the link for each episode should be in the description of the podcast. So if ever it's like, hey, here's a picture of this person, and you're like, I want to see what they look like, just click the link, follow the corresponding time, because both the the podcast and the YouTube video are the exact same length of time, and you'll be able to see it for yourselves, because there is some really neat artwork. Um, but yeah, with that, uh, let's could jump right into it. Last time, if you remember, our intrepid heroes had found their way over to Gadrian's fishery and had encountered a very unusual pair of a goblin and a rather well-kept dire rat. And... We'll just jump right back in to episode three of The Curse of the Crimson Throne, entitled Welcome to Level One. the windows yeah all the windows are boarded up um it is only one level where you are however you can tell that where this dock starts there is a drop off of about 13 feet so like this area right here from here to the water is like a small cliff of about 13 feet which means that while you can't see anything from where you are there is definitely room for there to be say another level underneath possibly so, how do we get in? Uh, Flack shrugs. Use door? Make door? Flack don't know, but if you go in, don't hurt little Longshanks. Flack we are not them. here to hurt the children. No? No. And we mean you no harm, small one. Oh. 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 Oh, Flack! Flack no good at lying. Tried once. Failed. Was a very short time ago. Flack? Would you know of a time when uh, the doors are unlocked, say, like, during normal business hours? Is it easier to sneak in then? Since you... B business hours? During day. Oh. Um. Hmm. During day. Carts come up. Get foul smelling thing. Put on cart. Fish! Flack thinks. Ah, uh, and then drive away. Through there. And he points over towards this area. And he says, Uh, front door. Door there. Always lock. Always lock. For best, angry dog inside. Ah, bad dog. Flack no like dogs. Flack like Toby. And he like pats the rat on the rump. So Arlen asks Flack, um, are the mini long shanks all there during the day? 
No, no. Some small longshanks go out, uh, p- pick pockets, get shinies from longshanks like yourself. They no like to, but must do. Um, Amelia glances over in the direction of the, um, uh, loading door over here. And then, um, she glances over this way and then heads, um, over to take a peek underneath the docks. Okay. Um, you see, um a separate down towards the bottom of the water you see that there is indeed a level underneath this one however um you can even see uh with your your low light vision a small like tear in the paneling that uh must be what flax using to get in but even his size you're not quite sure how he does it um and the there are no windows even built into that section down there so um Arlen's going to go uh, kind of look at, uh, I can look at myself, look at the other, like the cargo door mm-hmm. and uh, see if there's, you know, uh, first go over there and then see if like she can hear anything. Sure. Absolutely. So uh, when you look inside, you see that it, it does look like a cargo bay. Um, that uh, it's fairly old and there's several used barrels it's just reek of fish guts um and there is a door there that um give me a second uh so let's see um so the whole thing's about 15 feet wide um and it's it's built right up against the side of the building um there are a few carts nearby uh and like i said the uh the barrels just caked with just fish guts is just disgusting um there are double doors there um right here um uh and uh as far as you can tell doesn't look locked and uh, you also see give me one second while i reveal this real quick you see there is like a ramp right here um that that leads a little ways down to another door. Not to the lower level that Amelia saw, but it looks like it's kind of clear now. This there's there's like th- there's like three levels to this place. Okay. So uh Arlen's gonna come back over to uh the other people and tell them what she saw. And uh she's gonna ask like that's our way in. Uh, Amelia is going to ask her if she saw the dog. I, Arlen did not see a dog, and did not hear a dog. Correct. Correct. You did not see nor hear a dog. What does the top of the building look like? Um, it's a fairly sturdy roof. The shingles are starting to come off, but it's not rotting yet. Okay. Um, where is going to make a climb check? Please. Sure. Um, to see if she can get up on the roof. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me a uh, climb check, please. So, Arlen also has like some grappling arrows and rope that might help, like shooting an arrow up there and helping use a rope to, to climb up there. Sure, you could aid her absolutely. Um, if you're willing to do that, then uh, go ahead and add um, uh, actually add five to your climb check. Okay. But it will, uh, um, okay. Uh, so add another five to that, right? Adds an 11. Okay. Um, you're able to scramble up, uh, without too much trouble. Uh, the, uh, grappling arrow, however, um, it, when it's stuck up there, uh, when you're getting up towards the end, you, the, uh, one of the prongs that connects it kind of snaps off and you have to like scramble up really quickly at the end. So that arrow is unfortunately uh, ruined until repaired. Um, once on the roof, uh, it is a fairly flat. It's got a little slope to it on either side, um, but uh, there doesn't seem to be any skylights or anything of that nature. 
Okay. You said the shingles were coming off in places. Are there is there any mm-hmm. place where I can see in? Um. Give me a second here. Yes. So there is a um. To do to do to do. There is a small hole. And you can see this. You see down into what must be the front office. Um, and uh, there's a desk and a chair and uh, a couple of papers on the desk. And laying in just a filthy, decrepit bed is a rather mangy looking dog sleeping. And uh, from there, you can also hear in the room next to it this way, Mm -hmm. uh, the sound of children voices, but it's too indistinct to hear what they're saying. So um, Arlen also has uh, a drill and some rope. So she's uh, uh, also uh, going to throw some rope up to um, Muirin and... uh, Try to get more into to uh, secure that so she can climb up as well. Okay, do I need to roll for that? No, I, I mean you have opposable thumbs. I think it should be uh, doable. Okay. Um, so um, go ahead and roll me. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna uh, say like as Arlen's climbing up, Weary just like holds up a finger to like make sure that she's quiet. All right, roll me a climb check. Add five to it. Plus five, so that would be ten. Ten, okay. Um, you managed to make it up uh, without too much difficulty, and you can get next to Mary. Okay. So I want to use uh, my drill to kind of very quietly uh, drill a hole into the uh, roof, so I can we can look down and see what's in uh, some of the other rooms. Where are you drilling the hole? Um, so what you can do is if you just press and hold, you'll ping an area so I can see where you want to drill. So uh, first here with the kids. Okay. Um, make me an acrobatics check. Here, right? Okay, an acrobatics check. Yeah, because it is difficult to move along this roof. All right. Uh, do you have any bonuses to it? No. So, oh yeah, you do seven. All right. Um, you're able to. Uh, but I'm also holding onto a rope that's also secured already to the roof. Right. Well, this is less of a matter of moving around and more a matter of how difficult and loud it is. Right. So you're able to get over there, but uh, the um, the crest of the ceiling is like right here, basically. So you're able to get over the hump, but you make quite a bit of noise scraping around. And, uh, Mary, you can hear it. Um, does the dog seem to notice? Uh, yeah. So the uh, when she makes the noise, the dog, like, his head picks up and starts looking around, sniffing. Um... Weary is going to to quickly uh, get out of range of the hole. Okay. So that she can't be seen. And she is going to, to, to as quietly as possible, inform Arlen that she's being very loud. Yeah, Arlen's going to immediately just kind of stop and fr- and wait until Warren says it's okay to continue. Um, Otto and uh, Amelia, you guys are by the front, on the outside of the front door, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, you all of a sudden you hear like a uh, by the front door. You hear sniffing and growling. I would like right to on the do other side of the door. a handle animal through the door. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, how would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> a disadvantage to the door. I mean, I think to handle an animal, you have to be able to see it and communicate with it. You've got a door in the way. Yeah, that's true. Um, dang it, you're right. Oh, God damn it. Um, 
Fleck said that the door was locked, correct? Correct. <sighs> All right. Um, Amelia is going to motion at Otto that she is going to go around to the um, uh, this area. And then she's going to go there, I suppose. Okay. Otto, what are you doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> does it look... Do I have any idea, like, idea if I could smash this door in? Not that I'm going to, I'm just... For options' sake. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it's doable. Sure. Um, it, it'd have a, a hardness to it, and you'd have to... Uh, you could do two things. You could try and smash it in with your weapon, in which case there'd be a, a hardness level and a number of hit points. Hardness basically meaning it absorbs this many hit points before it does damage. Or, yeah, or you could do an athletics check and try and give above a, a certain DC. To kind of just try and bust it open. In fact, I'm quite positive there's no athletics. Because I'm looking at my mm -hmm. character sheet. You're, you're what, 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 what? No such thing as athletics. Yeah. That's not a thing. Wrong game, oh. bro. A uh, strength check. Strength check, yeah. No athletics. Strength check. It'd just be a strength check. Okay. Um... I'm going to stay here as long as I have any, some idea that um, Weary and um, Arlen are up above me. Okay. So, uh, Weary, you definitely hear the dog growling. Um, you can't really see what's going on anymore since you're not by the hole. But you can hear it growling and sniffing. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, um, Mary is going to head towards the back of the building and see if she can maybe lure the dog away so that it doesn't notice the rest of them <laughs> while they look around. Well, alright, um, so are you, uh, would you, like, try and look in the room to see, or are you just heading back? Um, I, she, she'll, um, she'll climb up to the, like, the, the center of the roof. And um, try and walk along that. Okay. And are you purposely making noise? Or how are you trying to get the dog's attention? Right now it's focused on something down below. Um, are there any other holes in the roof? Or is this it? That's the only one that you see. Okay. Um, she'll, she'll stop every couple feet and tap on the shingles. Alright, uh, once you start doing that, the dog just starts barking. Ruff, 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 and you go, ah, what is it? I don't know, someone's on the roof! And then uh, you hear, like, a lot of commotion inside. Hey, everyone, what you doing? Because you all hear this. I'm gonna try and force the door as soon as the dog starts barking. Yeah, okay. Amelia comes back around the corner. Uh, Arlen, what are you doing? You see, uh, you see Miri take off towards the back on the roof. And tap the, the roof. Um, I'm gonna stay up here with Miri for as long as she's up here. Okay. She disappeared so, into the blackness! <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that blackness is over tokens, not under them. Uh, alright, so roll me a strength check, please. Who? Uh, uh, auto. That should be it. Eighteen. All right. Um. So that is enough. Uh, with like your shield, you just kind of ram the door, and with a very loud crack and a splinter, um, you uh bust in, and you see the dog who is currently. Like, face that direction, barking up at the roof. Everyone! If you would, please. Roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. No, initiative is Arlen. four. So. Arlen. 
<laughs> Did you just roll one twice? <laughs> it, yeah. When I put a dish, pressed initiative, it just rolls one dice, and yeah. Oh, so it just doubled. So it wasn't you didn't just literally weren't unlucky enough to roll one twice. <laughs> Somehow decides we need two dice. Got it. Got it. I was just like, how unlucky are you? Well, I could say something mean, but I'm not going to. Oh, I got a message saying you wanted to send the results of this roll for the turn tracker, but no ballot token was selected. <gasps> oh no. Um. All right, we'll have to connect that later. What is it? It's eight right now. Yeah, I got eight. All right. Uh, everyone else, I'll have to connect your tokens to your character. But for now, we will just do auto. Um, Arlen. And uh, Murray. All right. And then we've got a eight, a four, and Murray is a six. Okay, and and Amelia is a nineteen. And I have huh. never, I have never rolled. Someone well initiated in it well. <laughs> Give me a second while uh, the dog rolls with his opposable thumbs. He gets a fourteen. I'm AFK just for one second. I'll be right back. Sure. And then let me uh da 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 da. Let me roll something real quick here. Don't you worry about a thing. The dog's name is Blue. A <laughs> Blue. <laughs> it's not really okay. confusing at all. No. All right. So let's go ahead and make this descending. Okay. Uh, we'll wait till uh, Otto gets back. In fact, if everyone wants to take a small break, don't stop recording or anything. Just take a small break, go to the restroom, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We'll be That's back. That's actually a really good idea. As our first combat of the campaign begins. Oh, oh. Real jump the gun on that one. All right. Uh, is everyone ready to go combat? Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Yeah, me and my combat? nine hit points are so ready for this. Oh, God, uh, yeah, it. that sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, we were we'll be uh, staying on the roof. Thank you. Amelia, yep. your turn. You go first. Let's do this. Combat. Woo. Okay. Um, TPK. TPK. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> and the curse of the Crimson Throne succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, Amelia is going to rush forward, and now she's going to try handle animal. <laughs> okay, uh, roll me a handle animal check. Uh, just so you know, um, it looks very angry, uh, and very like frothy at the mouth. So you can you can tell in your experience this isn't going to be easy, but it's not impossible either. Well, if she can have an animal not die a horrible death, it she's mm-hmm. gonna try. Yeah, sure. Uh, is this in D five? You can um, make any hit non lethal. I think we talked about this. You can do that in this too. Uh, it depends a lot on what weapon you're using. For example, really hard to make a sword non lethal. Okay. Uh, but a stick or staff or a club, um, it, like I said, it just kind of depends. I believe you're wielding a, uh, what are you wielding? A morning star. Yeah, that's, that's going to be lethal. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> There's no way to just kind of bruise him a bit with that. <laughs> I do have a mace. Uh, maces are going to be difficult too, simply because imagine holding a large chunk of, of metal with a weighted end and trying to just love tap them with that. And just gently bap them right in between the eyes. Yeah, exactly. You're going to break their skull. I mean, like, that's that's realistically. Um, uh, so, it's, it's, so, basically, if you wanted to do non-lethal damage, you would have to use something other than those weapons. Okay. Uh, for the time being. All right. So, Amelia, uh, you, 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 what do you do? What are you trying to do exactly? Um, she kind of, like 
runs in, and I'm imagining um, Otto is taking up like the majority of the doorway that he's no. just smashed through. No, it's it's about a ten foot doorway, so you could get oh. up here. Okay, awesome. So then she kind of like um, skirts to a halt, like beside him, and sort of like holds out her hands and goes low, trying to like speak calmly to the dog, just like it's all right, just <laughs> good boy. Okay, <laughs> it does not seem to have much effect. It, this dog is very much in attack mode right now. Yeah. So much in attack mode, though, that it starts charging for your face. Oh, boy. Yeah, sorry. You you, you kind of <laughs> made yourself vulnerable to it. Um, Not mechanically. Just it, it, you, you. So uh, Amelia bends down and says, come on, boy. Come on, boy. And it comes. Oh, boy. Uh, straight for you. Um. So, give me a second here. Uh, Does this provoke an attack of opportunity? No, unfortunately, closing into melee range does not provoke an attack of opportunity unless you have a weapon that has reach, which none of you do. In other words, unless you have a weapon that could reach out more than five feet. So, it runs up to you and rolls to hit against your AC. That is a natural 20. All right, it's going to roll to... Well, I, yeah, it's going to... It's a, it's a named creature. It's going to roll to confirm. That is a 12 versus your AC. Um, AC is 13. Okay, so that's, so it doesn't confirm the critical. Uh, and so everyone there, for everyone, all the listeners and viewers out there, the way Pathfinder works is if you roll a natural 20, it's a chance to get a critical. You roll to confirm it, which means you roll the attack die again. If that would have hit the person then we draw from a really cool critical hit deck that paizo makes um that has d- cool neat effects uh i'm saying cool and neat i know it doesn't sound like it at the moment um but uh since it didn't confirm it it just does the maximum damage it can do on an attack which is amelia you take five points of damage oh boy as it uh, it barrels into you and takes a, a, a sinks its teeth into your hands, or actually, yeah, like into your arm and starts shaking your arm. Uh, Otto, your turn. Well, I suppose I'll have to uh, grab him in the head. He's currently biting down on my arm. Maybe not the head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gotta make an omelet. You know what I mean. His back. <laughs> okay. His neck. Seventeen Whoa. hit nine damage. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a hit. And um, with one large smack of your morning star, you slam it into the dog's back. You hear the spine crack, and with a just a, the dog falls down motionless. With that, oh, he should have actually gone. Okay. Um, as that happens, as his turn comes up. Uh, the door behind or in front of you. So this door right here burst open. Let me reveal a little bit here. Da 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 da. And a uh, a man with an eye patch and a bandana and a rust are. What are we going on here? Blue. And. Uh, <laughs> He actually, um, let's see, what is we going to move over what we got going on here? Oh, yeah, definitely can make it. He's actually going to um, come around the table because Arlen is actually, I'm going to move you like over here, Arlen. I know you can't, uh, you can't see, I can see you. I'll be able to move you real quick, but I need to move him over to here. And he's going to make an attack against you as seeing you just killed his dog. Uh, so move that here. Uh, he pulls out a a um a scimitar. Uh, it looks very rusted and kind of pitted, and um he uh goes to chop at you with it. It is a eighteen versus AC. All right, it clanks off your shield. 
as he like Arr! all right Murray um I'd say you guys have heard quite a lot you heard uh, Amelia say nice boy calm down you heard a vicious growling and, and probably a cry of pain from Amelia I don't know exactly if if your character would or not uh yeah yeah no that hurt then you hear a thrack uh, a yelp and then what do you do below so you hear all of that from where you are awesome um what do I hear from the room where the kids are uh, it's being drowned out by the noise you're hearing from here. Okay. Okay. I'm assuming this hole is not big enough to fit me, even if I were to whack at it with a mace. Uh, you could attempt to whack at it with a mace, okay. but it's I'm definitely gonna... not that big. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I just kind of want to get inside. Um, okay. So I'm going to start um, whacking at the hole and see if I can, seeing if I can make it bigger. Alright, um, so go ahead, you don't need to roll to hit, because it's a roof. But please go ahead and roll damage for me. You're telling me a roof doesn't have an AC? It really, it's, you can't dodge well. <laughs> Alright, so... It has a hardness, which means that um, you gotta get through the hardness to do damage to it, but... So just go ahead and roll damage for your weapon. All right. Um, you whack your mace on it, but it's well enough constructed that your mace just kind of it leaves a dent in it, but not any real structural damage. It doesn't improve the hole. All right. Well, she so she rolled an eight, right? So it'd be eight plus three. I'm gonna go with the dice. Yeah, because the dice showed eight. So never mind. Um, That's weird. Sorry. Yeah, Alora's in charge of rolling, so she messed it up. <laughs> well, That's fine. I clicked eight. on the thing. It's okay. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm messing uh, Just try it, try it one more time. Make me do extra shit. Why are you rolling with my crossbow, honey? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Ignore that one. Oh, that's why. Okay, got it. Okay, so... No, the first one was heavy mace. No, no, no. No, that's right. And now it's a seven and yeah. saying it's a two. That's weird. All right, you know what? Screw that. It's it's an eight plus three. No, wait, an eight plus, what's your strength modifier? Oh, she's going to have to check one. Da, 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 da. Bear with us, viewers, as we all learn the system. By the way, none of us have played Pathfinder before. That's uh, a three. <laughs> Can you tell? Okay, so uh, you technically, so you so you actually rolled max damage, and you actually did 11 points of damage, not three points of damage, which means that you thwack the hole and tear uh, a large chunk. It's about double the size now. You could probably uh, fit your head through it now. Okay. So it would probably yeah. be big enough that I could probably try and take a shot at this dude. From a from the ranged rift. weapon? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think that's my turn, but... Yeah, yeah so, so that's that's, that's, exactly that's exactly what I'm going to do. Right, Arlen's so going to do. let you guys know. Uh, it's big enough to take a shot. However, because you're firing through a small hole, he's going to have a certain amount of cover, which means his AC will go up by two. As it makes it more difficult to hit him. I mean, it's still better than me trying to, like, slide down and then run in. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, right. Like, would I be able to slide down the rope and run in? You could have to make an acrobatics check. Okay. To do that. I'm just going to try and shoot at him. I'm assuming... I'm assuming the hole You have to is... move a little bit. Like, because... Okay, so, so here's the thing. The hole is, like, right here. So, to hit him... You'd have to, like, move to here. But that's well within your movement range. Yeah, I'd move here. And then I'd shoot at him with my crossbow. Mm -hmm. Roll to hit, please. That's within 30 feet, so that would be point blank. Point blank. Yes, it would be. Um, That's 11 versus AC. That is going to be a miss. Yep. And I don't know what's going on with the damage macro. The plus two is for blank shot, right? Yes. So we're just gonna I'll ignore what it says here. Oh no, wait, no, yours worked. I was looking at the heavy mace again. <laughs> no, mine worked properly. Never mind. So yeah, you 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 unfortunately missed the AC. Yeah. So the bolt thrunks into the table next to him. Alright, we are back up to Amelia's turn. Amelia, your hand your arm is uh bleeding, but the dog is let go. Cause it's dead. Um 
I would like to use Jolt at the pirate. Okay. Um, that's what killed Mr. Wuffle. <laughs> we don't talk about that. The viewers don't, don't know what you're about talking that. about. <laughs> um, I don't know who Mr. Wuffles is or was. But yeah, it's just a die three. Um, so, they have three. They have. They actually have one d three. It's basically a pyramid, and then you take the number that's facing upwards. It's weird, but it, they have them. That's a die four. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I don't know. Actually, I don't. Man, I, screw. It's not like I. It's not like I'm a GM or anything. Don't don't ask me these questions. All right. Uh, so you you you're casting jolt at the pirate who's attacking Otto uh, on the other side of the table. Yes. All right. So the jolt hits automatically. Oh, that wrong one. But um, yes, there is no saving throw, but there is a spell resistance. So if he's like resistant to like, no, he's not. Okay, I'll be. I'll, I'm gonna a little bit of GM tip here. Low level things like this don't have spell resistance. <laughs> that's more. That's later on in life, if you know what I'm saying. Um, all right. So what is the uh, what is the save? What do you need to roll to save? Uh, there is no saving throw. Oh, so is there a roll to attack, or is it just it hits? It's it's just a hit. You cause okay. a spark of electricity to strike the target with a successful range attack. Oh, neat. So yeah. Oh yeah. So you have to cast. Yeah. So you have to you have to roll a range attack to hit it. Uh, do you have any dexterity bonus? Uh, yes, that would be. Plus three, so 18 altogether. Oh, okay. That is enough to hit. Um, so you do three points of damage. Uh-huh. Okay. As it, it hits him in the, 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 the left shoulder and it goes, Arr! like a mummy, I guess. All right. Um, Blue is dead. So it's his turn. No. He's going to. Uh... Oh, auto. No. Yeah. Well, yes. It's Otto's turn. <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be the NPCs that forget him, not you. <laughs> <laughs> His curse is powerful. What can I say? <laughs> Alright, yes, Otto. Uh, what are you doing? Morning star on the pirate for starters. So that's. Uh, is that a crit? Oh my god, that's a crit. Uh, well, maybe I gotta roll another con- 2020 then. Uh, it already tried to confirm it. Oh, it but, auto-confirmed it. Oh, wow. Yeah, 5 plus 4 is a 9, so that's kind of cool. I didn't know it did that. So it didn't confirm, but you do max damage, which means uh, your your roll is a 1d8 plus 4. Yeah, it should be 12 is, is max. Yeah, so you do 12 points of damage. And uh, uh, would you like to describe how you kill this pirate? Bloody. No, I don't know. I'm just... Mace comes down and his head splits open and gets stuck in his skull. <laughs> like, shaking it off. <laughs> shaking his corpse right. off my mace. <laughs> okay. So, alright. Okay, so you, 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 the Morningstar hits his head with a dull thunk, and uh, he immediately just drops to the ground. And you hit him so hard that you kind of have to put your foot on him and gah, pull the Morningstar back out of his head. And with that, things grow uh, a bit more silent. You hear, uh, um, you hear, uh, Hookshanks, what's going on? From this direction. And you hear footsteps. And you hear a lot of frightened children's voices over here. Amelia. And you do see a door that's open over here as well. Um, which Larry leads to... is immediately going to come down off the roof. Do I need to make a roll for that, I think? Uh... I, we are still attached to rope, so. Yeah, yeah, um... Yes, make me an, uh, an a climb check just to see if you can do it at full speed. Okay, yeah, you can do it easily. And she's going to come in the door and um, try and make her way over to the kids. Okay, towards that door. Is there a door there, or yes, she there have to is. Go through it? Yeah, there's okay. a door right here. Right okay. That. Is it locked? Nope. Okay, awesome. She's going to open that door. Okay, so you open that door. 
And give me a second while I do this. Um, so let me describe a little bit what you see here. So uh, you open the door and the stink in this room is a, is a mixture of fish and sweat. And it's enough to make your eyes water. Um, to the east is a, a large wooden trowel, this thing right here. Uh, it holds a hideous mound of half-rancid fish, seaweed, and brine. A filthy river water and fish blood stain the floor uh, around the trough. So this area, it's very, it looks very slick and slippery. Uh, and a pair of wooden shoots lead from the trough through holes in the eastern wall. So you see like little shoots that lead this way. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, uh, to the west uh, over here is a desk. Uh, in one corner, and there's a cabinet in this corner uh, with a closed door, and that's what you see. And you see one, two, three, four, five uh, small children uh, dressed in. They're dressed in rags. Their hair's matted. They are not. They don't look like they're well taken care of. And uh, if you would please give me a second here, uh, I have to roll something, and then I need you to roll something. Go ahead and roll me a perception check, please. Okay. All right. Uh, so what you see is one, two, three, four, five children ranging between the ages of six and 11 looks to be the oldest. Mm-hmm. And they are just standing there frightened. Okay. Um, so that's. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was, I was going to be like, where, where is going to, I don't think that's the door. I think uh, I'm no, go one on the more. High, yeah. So you oh. have, you have enough movement this turn to get to the door and open it. Uh, but mm-hmm. that's all you'll be able to do this turn. Okay. So you open it, you see them. Um, it's now Arlen's turn. So, yeah, Arlen's going to do the same thing. She's going to try and uh, slide down the rope and uh, join the rest of the party. Make me uh, a climb check, please. Okay. Uh, we'll take the first one. That's fine. Yep. Uh, you expertly almost uh, just slide down the rope almost like a SWAT team and uh, you can make it into the room. You're going to have to squeeze past it. Just so you guys know, you can move through spaces occupied by your companions. You just can't end your turn in the same space. Okay. So so you can get into that room. Like here? I don't know how far in the room. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say about there. So you think about 15 feet this way and then 15 feet that way. Yep. Yep. So you're in that room there. Okay. And um, what is right in front of me? This is, is it like a wooden chest or something? Right in front of you? No, it's a doorway. It's a closed door. Okay. And uh, you can see through this door, you can see a little bit of what looks like an office. You see a desk and a chair, and that's what you see in there. All right. Uh, that's your movement. Uh, would you like to do something? No, I'm just kind of like waiting and listening and seeing if I can hear anybody. I mean, I've got my crossbow ready. Got it. Okay. Um, all right. If anybody, you know, if anybody comes through, I'll ready in action to shoot at them. Makes sense. Uh, give me one second here. That's not a child. Sorry, let me clarify. I don't want to shoot any small children. <laughs> Anyone. Uh, okay, so you're ready in an action. So if someone comes to the door, you you, you take a shot. Got it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, when you do that, Miri, uh-huh. you see running up the stairs and makes it to about here uh, a familiar face. Give me a second here. You see uh, a half orc with an eye patch and a scarred face. And you recognize this half orc. This half orc was there when your orphanage was burned down. I know. <laughs> Sorry, Elora is pointing out the name. I know. <laughs> And uh, it runs up the stairs and it says, What are you doing, you worthless brats? Attack them! And um, 
or you'll feel the back of my hand. And give me a second. I need to look up a quick stat for this gentleman. No, 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 I got those. He, um, he he says that, he screams that at them, but the children kind of look around nervous and scared and unsure what to do, but they don't react. Um, Weary is going to call out to them and and sort of open her arms and and kneel and go, children, come here. We mean you no harm. Roll me a diplomacy check, please. Um, they look at you about the same way. They look confused and terrified and they just, they don't move. It's all. It's clear that it's clear that um, they are terrified of this man. Can, can Arlen add to that and say, you know, it, it's okay, kids. We're not here to hurt you. Um, you can. I'm gonna make you wait till your turn, though. Like one one action or two is fine when it's not your turn. But um, we'll say that's that. So uh, oh, blue. Let me just get. Let me just take this dead puppy off. All right. Um, <laughs> Amelia. Yeah. It is your turn. Um, is this door the same um, width as the one leading out, or is it a smaller door? Uh, it's a smaller door. It's about five feet wide. Now, you could still move through your companion, as long as you don't end the turn in the same space. Because here's the idea. Each of these squares represents about five feet. Now, most of us are not five feet wide. The idea is that we take up about five feet of personal space, but you and I could very easily pass through a five foot space if we're coordinating, if that makes sense. Okay. I just yeah, yeah. turn to the side and let you pass through. All right. Um... Uh, I should note, though, the other player has to be cooperative. Uh, Miri could block you if she chooses. And then you're going to be fighting on all sides. Uh oh. Um... Amelia is actually just going to um, go into this office, um, kind of (laughs) cradling her very torn up arm and just looking around. Okay. All right. Uh, So you see the rest of the office. Um, Give me a second here. I'll tell you what you see. Okay. Uh, There's a wooden desk. Sits in one corner of the room, obviously. This desk right here that you're in front of. Um, uh, It's side preventing... uh, It prevents this door from opening up all the way. You kind of have to squeeze through, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The table is heaped with dozens of slate boards and covered with chalk scrawls. uh, While uh, to the east there is a cabinet that slouches against the wall. Um... Give me a second here. All right. Yeah, that is what you see. Um, do you want me to roll a perception thing for going through the um, desk or something? Uh, you mean like searching it? Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Roll me a perception check, please. All right. Uh, you go through it. You find, like I said, a lot of chalk, a lot of uh, woods, like slate uh, markings. It doesn't look like anything really valuable is kept in this room. This looks like a workspace where, where business is conducted. Okay. All right. All right. Well, yeah, you can move on to the next one. Uh, give me a second, peeps, while I do something real quick. Roll me a little die here and there. Okay. Uh, Otto, your turn. I have two questions. Mm-hmm. Are you allowing that as a movement? You see my arrow? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Oh, crossways? Just diagonal, diagonal through a doorway. Yeah, sure. I'm not going to... Yeah, yeah, it's it's allowed. I'm not going to quibble over diagonal doorway movement. Okay. The other question would be, can I run through these children? Or maybe jump over that pool? Which seems... Um. So... Yeah, um, 
yes for the most part you can kind of dodge around the kids they're 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 children so and like i said you can move through spaces um they're not hostile right now so they wouldn't block you they're very kind of confused so uh, but if you're gonna move in this area uh you're gonna have to do it very carefully or give me an acrobatics check because this is very slippery <laughs> All right. So, and uh, I'm 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 referring to the uh, for listeners the area by the trough with all the fish gets in it. Oh, I see where the woods kind of white white colored. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, this is a trough full of fish guts and ra- rancid seaweed, and it splashes over onto the ground, so the ground around the trough is very slip- slick and slippery. All right. I got you. All right, so I would. Oh, you poor puppy! Blues back from the grave. Gorum, help me save these children, and I would go up there, so I don't actually need to roll up there. All right, so you're casting Shield of Faith. What does that do exactly? AC buff. Uh, so the spell creates a shimmering magic of field around the target that averts and deflects attacks. The spell grants the subject of plus two to deflection to AC. Uh, which target? Me. It's personal. Or no, it's, you. Sorry, okay. it's not, but I'm doing it on me. Got it. Got it. Because you said Gorm protect these children. I'm like, he's casting it on the kids. Got no, it. yeah, no, I, I'm going to protect them by killing the other guy. <laughs> Makes sense. All right, so your AC, your AC goes up by two. Got it. Um... Your turn. <laughs> I'm so sick of buying food. Yeah, she just shoves like <laughs> five crackers into her mouth. They're that seems cheese- rather odd, Mary. I know bad. you've got cookies in your pack, but wouldn't you be giving them to the kids, if anything? It's just mean to eat in front of the kids like that. <laughs> kids, come to me. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Ritz. No, no, there's cheese. It's <laughs> yeah. Mine. <laughs> you better come get these before I eat them all. Yeah. So, uh, what what is Mary doing? Um, she's probably gonna retry that diplomacy check. And see if she can. Sure. Help them. What are you doing? I'm laying down because sitting forward hurts. I know, and my feet are cold. <laughs> oh my goodness! I suppose I will roll for you, my dear. Huh. You're the one who's Amelia and uh, Mary. Half of the there strangest combat banter. <laughs> You're making fun of us. You better put that earbud back in. Everyone handles the stress of combat differently. <laughs> Apparently some people lie down. Yeah, Amelia just lies down on the floor in the office in there. Okay, I will roll since you are planking on the bed. Uh-huh. Oh... Oh, Mary. These kids are obviously terrified. Um, incredibly scared. However, one of them, it does look like one of them gets through. This kid um, kind of hesitantly looks around and holds its head down and comes up to you. And uh, it, it uh, comes up to you. It's a very small looking child, dirty hair, um, tattered rags, and comes up to you hesitantly. Um as if, uh, like, to your, are you still, like, holding your arms wide? Yes. Okay. And uh, when it gets to your arms, it stops, it hesitates for a second, as if it's just, you know, terrified or, or unsure what to do. Um, and then... Give me a sec. It pulls out a dagger and shoves it towards you. Um, what's your AC? I think my AC is an 18, but Alora is supposed to be manning the controls. That's right there. Fine. Um, the the knife skids off your armor. The 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 attack just wasn't uh good enough to land. And it's very clear when its face looks up the kid is not a kid at all. It is um a disguised gnome. With uh, almost uh, uh, crazy manic eyes, it uh, it's disguised well as a as a child. But when you, when when it gets close enough, you can see very clearly 
that uh, this character is not a kid, but it has a mad crazed look. It's dressed like a child. It tried to get close to you, and uh, it did. It just sucked at its attack. <laughs> that that picture is awesome. <laughs> yeah, because I've got I've got scale mail, so that would give me. Depends what your dex is. My dex, I think my dex moves is a is a three, I think. Uh, if you have scale mill, um, it's the fourteen is definitely not going to hit you. Okay, uh, so I think two. scale mill gives you like five, if I remember correctly. Well, my AC, yeah, my AC is a two, so I think a plus five makes it eighteen or, or a twelve. God damn it! So you're you're you're. You you certainly wouldn't have gotten hit by that. It basically it scrapes off your armor. The 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 attack was just ill aimed, but it's very clear now. This is not a child. This is a mad crazy gnome. Excellent. Hmm. Um. Arlen. No. Uh. Yeah. Arlen, it's your turn. So, I'm assuming right now there's no way I can really get into the room. You know, because of the gnome. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that gnome's not going to just let you. So, would I be able to stand, like, over for next to uh, Murray, or kind of on the dead body? Um, you mean an attack through the door? You're not going to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah, like, I mean, like, if you're standing, like, here or here, you'd have to somehow attack around Murray to him. That's not really going to work. All right. Um, you can uh, like fire a ranged attack, but it's going to be harder to hit because you're they're engaged with melee. Yeah. Oh man, it would have been great if Murray had like just to the side and not blocked the door. That's fine. Um, can I like yell out to the kids and try to get them to like calm down and follow us? Sure. Yeah, roll me a diplomacy check. Oops. As she uh, takes the calming tones of a cell phone. That's that's how what I do for diplomacy checks. Come on, you just start singing. It, starts beeping <laughs> it at the is. Kids. It helps my diplomacy. <laughs> um. Yeah, the kids. They 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 hear you. They definitely hear you. But they look to you, and then they look to Long Shanks. I mean, sorry, Long Shanks. They look to uh, um, Hook Shanks, and they look to Giggles, and. Uh, they they're just terrified. They are rooted in place. One of them actually like gets squats down and starts wailing. Um. So I guess I will ready another attack with the crossbow. If there's don't see the, doing a skill check like that takes an action. So all you have is a movement uh, and a quick action. Now you need to use your movement to load the crossbow, so you can do that. Okay. Sure. Right. I will. All right, so you load the crossbow. Got it. All right, uh, so that's your turn. And now it is the half-orc. Um, he has uh, lowered movement. He has to move basically at, at half speed because of this filthy, mucky floor. But that's still enough, just enough to get him carefully through. Actually, hang on. Let me see something here. 10, 20. Okay, yeah. He has just enough to do that without incurring an attack of opportunity. So he scoots around this kid. And then when he gets here, he rushes the rest of the way up to uh, Otto. And uh, he uh, has a, a, a long um, chained morning star or flail. Sorry. And uh, he swings it at you. Um, actually, yeah, all right, I already moved him. So that's what he's going to do. Um, ba -ba 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 he is swinging to hit you, Otto. That is a natural 20. You are the meanest GM I have I, ever I, seen. It's not... You keep stealing the good rolls, man. I'm sorry. And he rolls to confirm a natural <laughs> Wait, what, what does that mean? It's a paradox. It just means he doesn't confirm the, the crit. He's still... <laughs> He's critically cancelled out? 
I think I think that if you roll a natural twenty and then a natural one, you should have to re-roll the natural twenty. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not the rules. Um, so he does um, 11 points of damage to you, Otto. I'm sorry. It's the dice. It's, it's not me. As the flail just whips into you. Um, and it is now Amelia's turn. Um... I know you're capable of staying up past 10 p.m. Look, man, my head hurts. <laughs> um, she's going to try and... You said that this is uh, just a chest, or...? Uh, yeah, it's a cabinet. But uh, the, the perception check you, you gave was for the whole room. There's not much of value in there. It's just a place of work. So it's obvious that they're not keeping their, their money or, or treasure in here. Um... She's going to come back out, see the crazy gnome guy, and what kind of penalty would it be to, um, uh... The fire ranged attack into uh, yeah. that situation. So if you have an ally engaged in melee with someone and you fire a ranged attack at them, it increases their AC by four. So it makes them harder to hit by four. Okay. So, luckily, in the system, there's not really a big chance you'll hit your companion. It just makes them harder to hit. Got it. All right, so then I will be doing that. And that's uh, plus dexterity, correct? Correct. That is a miss. Nice. All right. Um, Otto, your turn. How does death work in this game? Do you mi- minus one health per turn, so you're at minus ten? Is that it? Are you below? Are you? Uh, are you uh, below zero? Oh yeah. I'm at negative one. I'm down. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, you hit me okay. for eleven. There's no level yeah. one character has that much. Maybe a barb. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um. So yeah, you are down. Um. And it's minus one per turn, correct? But you can make a Constitution check to stabilize. And then in this, um, you have to, uh, oh gosh, how could I forget that? Give me one second. <laughs> the stabilized check for Pathfinder is, that's a spell. You know what? Screw it. I'm not going to waste time on it. I'm just going to say you have to get above a 12. You did. You you stabilized. I'll 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 look at the actual rules a little bit later. I'm not going to slow down combat for it. Awesome, because I think I have that cantrip. So you saved me a spell. <laughs> so yeah, you you you're down, but you're not continuing to bleed out. And the way Pathfinder works is that if you're taken down below zero, you fall unconscious. You start bleeding out. If your hit points falls in the negatives further than your Constitution score, you die. So, luckily, that's not going to happen at the moment, but Otto is unconscious. Um, And it is Mary's turn. Just to interrupt, uh, the character makes a constitution check DC 10, with a penalty equal to the character's negative hit point. Oh, I see, I see. So, so basically, it means if he's at negative 4, he'd take 4 penalty to that check. But you you still succeed. Alright, Mary, it's your turn. Um... Could I make a physical attack and then a spell? No. It's one or okay. the other. Okay. Um, fuck it. She's going to chest kick this this uh, crazy dude and see if she can kick him back far enough um, that maybe she trips up the orc. Uh, you'd have to kick him through a kid to do that. Well, she'll just kick him really hard. Okay. Uh, are you are, so? Are you trying to? This is, I want to be clear about this. Are you just kicking him to do damage, or are you trying to shove him backwards? Because there's a kid right. I'm behind kicking him to do damage. Okay. All right. Do it. Kick him. Is that just a physical? What is that? Uh, do you have a natural attack? I've got talons. Yes, it's true. Um, I'm not 
Let's see. I gotta see what a kick attack would be for you. Um, Normally they're like a d4. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, go ahead and roll your attack roll. Um, is that plus Which strength? Melee. For, for melee. Uh, it'd be plus strength. Yeah. Well, I don't know where that is. So. You don't want to, like, draw your weapon or anything? No, no. <laughs> this fucker tried to stab me. That's true. Plus strength. Okay. Uh, that is definitely a hit. So roll me 1d4, please. Oh, I'm doing this under Amelia. Alright, three points of damage. Okay. Alright, as your talon kind of rakes into his shoulder and draws uh, drops blood. A little bit of blood. Okay. Uh, it is his turn now. Um, okay. He uh, attacks you again with his uh, kukuri, which is what he's using. Um, but da, 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 da. his attack bonus. <laughs> Sorry, keeping a lot of track, of a lot of stuff here. So he rolls to hit a. Oh my god! Almost another critical. Jesus. Uh, not a critical though. Luckily for you, a kukuri is not uh, a nineteen to twenty crit. Um. So, that is a 23 to your AC, definitely a hit. Um, oh, crap. Sorry. Critical is 18 to 20 on a Kukuri. God so, damn it. He's going to roll to confirm. He confirms. I am so sorry you rolled another 19, so a 23 total. Uh, Dude, boy. I called this. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, let's just take one card. So, this is how critical hits work. If you confirm it, you draw a critical hit card, and then you take do the effect um, of the type of weapon you wield, which is slashing damage for him. Which is, let me put this on here, slashing damage is a long gash, normal damage, and eight bleed. A successful heal check cuts the bleed in half rather than ending it. All right. Um, okay. So normally, here's how bleed works. You take uh, bleed damage every turn. So you would take eight points every turn. Uh, I have he- nine hit points, dude. I know. Nine. Um, but a heal check will, uh, I'll say a heal check will, will, will stop it in this case. Um, but he hits you really hard. Um, so he's going to do normal damage, which is not that bad. So at least it's not double damage. Um, which is, give me one second. Okay. Uh, he does one point of damage. Um, and then you take, (laughs) uh, roll me a heal check, please. What is that with? Uh, it's a skill. Heal is actually a skill. Okay. Um, you succeed. You take. Uh, you only take four damage in bleed. Awesome. So five total. As you very quickly, he slashes you for a point of damage, but it's a very long gash, um, and blood starts to spurt out. But you, uh, through your healing skill, know how to like place your hand to staunch the blood. All right, Arlen, your turn. The uh, uh, Miri looks like she's bleeding pretty badly. Uh, you know, that's bad, and um, I have no idea that there's anything I can do to help, except maybe just shoot at this guy. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna try and do a attack, a point blank shot. Okay. Oh, that is definitely a hit. Even with the minus four, you rolled a 22, so minus four from that is still an 18. That's enough to hit. Um, yeah, yeah, so definitely. So I hit him for six points of damage. Okay. Um, that, the, as a, a crossbow bolt, thunks into his shoulder, knocking him back just a bit. Okay. Uh, and then you still have a move action. You can reload the crossbow. You can move. Yeah, I'll reload the crossbow. Okay. All right. 
that's your turn. Giggles. Giggles can't do ranged uh, a melee attack right now. So what he's going to do is um do a ranged attack at you, Arlen. And so he's using a child as a human shield. Uh no, he's just shooting over their head. <laughs> okay. Um let's see here. Right? Uh so this is a ranged attack to you. 18 versus AC. Oh, which is 17. Oh, right. Um, so that is... You take... 7 points of damage. As a uh, arrow just thuds into your shoulder. Well, that's not good. No, it's not. Okay. Things are looking kind of grim. Um, but that's his turn. Amelia, it's your turn. Time to be, uh, big heroes, folks. I need a hero. Alright, um, I'm gonna throw, um, let me see real quick. How far this fucker is. Oh, perfect. It's just within range, so I'm... Actually, now I'm going to keep firing uh, stuff at um, Twinkle Toes over here. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, 20 plus 3 to hit. That would be... Or I'm going to... D20 plus 3 to hit. That's, That's not a hit, unfortunately. Yeah. As you were doing jolt? Yeah. Yeah, it strikes into the door. Uh, you have a movement action, a quick action, anything you'd like to do? Uh, she's going to take a step forward. That's about all she can do. Alright. Miri? Um, so we're going to channel some energy right now. Alright. Uh, and keep in mind, too, that if this raises Otto uh, back from the negatives, he'll be back in the fight. Um, and if it, nobody in the party is neutral, right? Everybody's no. good? Yeah, I think everyone's uh, some form of good alignment. Awesome. So if, if uh, anybody in the room is not a good alignment, um, we're going to say it probably causes damage to them. Okay, that's right. So Miri has a feat. Uh, I forget what it's actually called. Um, but it allows her when she channels energy, she can choose people of a non-good alignment, whether or not they get healed by it or hurt by it. All right. Uh, so channel positive energy is uh, an ability clerics have. They they can uh, within twenty feet. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, they can uh, cast energy to to help and heal people. Uh, it's one d six. Is it plus your wisdom, or is it plus something, or just one d six? That is an excellent question. The feed itself is called Alignment Channel. Um, I do not remember what it's plus. Channel Energy, Cleric. It is... Wow, that's really strong. It doesn't even provoke an attack of opportunity. Um, no, it, does, it doesn't. I just looked it up. It actually doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, it is neat. Because it's not, it's not like a spell or anything. It's just something they can do. Um... Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have to clasp your holy symbol and um, just channel energy through it. It's on my back. <laughs> it's the birdhouse. It's not a birdhouse, but good, good guess. That's You're what close. I envisioned when you described it. I was like, yeah, it's like a birdhouse on her back. Nice. So you heal one d six points of damage for every two cleric levels beyond first. Um, so uh, you basically just one d six, one d six of damage. You can heal okay. and cause. So just roll me a d6. Two. So everyone heals two except for hook shanks and giggles. They take two points of damage. Otto, are you are you uh, past the negatives? Yeah, I'm in positives. I'm assuming I lose my self cast buff because I went down. Right? Yeah. Uh, correct. I believe that's uh. Well, is is if it's not a concentration spell, it would still be on you. 
And I don't think most divine spells are concentration spells. I will say this, though. Um, standing up while engaged in melee would attack, uh, provoke an attack of opportunity. Um, so, but Miri, that's your turn. That's Hookshank's turn. Hookshanks is going to try and hit you with his kukuri. Um, so that is... What was that? Oh, whoops. I am rolling the wrong die. There we go. An 11 versus AC. I believe that's a miss. That's a miss. That's a miss. That's Hookshank's turn as the knife like screeches off your armor. Actually, for 11, I don't think he'd even hit your armor. He probably just, you whiff, he whiffed it. <laughs> All right, Arlen, your turn. So I'm going to fire again. And as I fire, I'm going to say, treat each day like your last. And today is that day. And totally miss. But it's <laughs> not. <laughs> you rolled an eight. So the you say that and the arrow thuds into the wall next to Miri. <sighs> And I'm going to use my move action to, of course, reload. Reload. Okay. Um, Giggles. Uh, Giggles has a bow drawn right now. Um, I don't know if he would have noticed uh, Otto up yet. He's still on the floor. So Giggles is just going to try and fire another shot at... Um, Well, he saw Miri do something that looked rather painful, so he's going to take a shot at Miri. However, Miri, your AC is going to be four higher than normal because you're engaged. Okay. But he, he, you did something that made him feel not good, and that does kind of freaking him out just a little bit. So he rolls a twenty-one. With the plus four, I'm a twenty-two. Oh my god, nice. So he tries to avoid his companion, he fails, and uh, it does not hit. Uh, and that is Giggle's turn. It is Amelia's turn again. I'm going to try and hit the gnome again. <laughs> okay. We're going to throw lightning at it until it dies, and that's that. <laughs> I mean, Unless you want me to switch to acid, it's literally the same amount of damage. Well, it's up to you. Damage is damage. Damage be damage, yo. Oh, man. For fuck's sake. I'm sorry. So that's seven. That's not going to hit. Oh, my God. Sorry. All right. Otto, um, standing up would provoke an attack of opportunity, but I don't think he can fire. He doesn't have a... He has a bow in his hands. Um, I don't think he can make attacks of opportunities with a bow in his hands without a feat. You need a... You need a um, he's engaged, he's engaged with, me. with uh, Miri. Yeah, he's got his back to you. So, uh, I don't know if Pathfinder cares about that, but I do. And I think that makes n- no sense whatsoever that he'd be able to, like, what, like, Back hook hook backstab you somehow? No, um, giggles will see it, but y- you need a feat to be able to do an attack of opportunity with a ranged weapon. So believe it or not, you could stand up unprovoked, and that would take a move action. Okay. That is what I'm going to do, and I'm also going mm-hmm. to since they can't take attacks of opportunity. Heal myself. Oh, okay. Not, not actually roll for the heal gun. Jeez. Jeez. Hang on. <laughs> Cure light wounds is one d eight points. So plus one. So six points of damage. You healed to you. Six points of healing goodness. Okay. Um, Weary, your turn. Um. I'm going to draw my mace and try and cave this stupid shithead's head in. Oh, okay. So drawing is a move action or part of a move action, which you're not moving, so it's fine. Uh, and uh, try to uh, cave his head in. Uh, 11 is not enough to hit his AC, unfortunately. Okay. Well, at least I've got it out now. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, he's a tough little bugger to hit because he's a gnome. He's very small. Um... Okay, and it's his turn. 
He's gonna <laughs> bleed, little bird, bleed, as he attempts to stab you with his kukuri. The the gnome is calling the bird little. Uh huh. <laughs> Seventeen versus AC. Eighteen is my AC. All right, it did you 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 know bleed. <laughs> All right, um, Arlen, your turn. So Arlen's gonna try and shoot at uh, the crazy-eyed looking little gnome again. Okay. And hope that, you know, this time she makes it. Uh, let's see. Uh, that is not enough to hit him. He is just so small. She's a tiny, tiny thing. Yeah, well, with the four because of the uh, AC penalty. Yeah. Alright. <sighs> I know. So I'm going to spend a move action to uh, also reload my crossbow. Okay. Rinse and repeat. Got it. Giggles is now very aware that Otto is up. And he's going to turn his attention back to Otto. However, um, he's just going to drop his bow and grin and say... He starts like literally giggling to himself as he goes, He's back up. Uh, but it's a deeper voice because it's, it's back up. And um, he drops his bow, uh, draws his flail again, and uh, makes an attack on you, Otto. 18 versus AC. That's a miss. Okay. okay. It, it does, does not, not connect. connect. Uh, Amelia, we're back up to you. Um. So instead of fucking with the stupid gnome, I would like to shoot at the, um, I'm, I'm going to shoot at Giggles. Uh, at Giggles? Instead of the stupid gnome, it's going to be the stupid orc. Yeah, I'll say you can he- see it. You can see it, him. It's a him. It's not a, it's not a thing. It will be, once you kill it. It'll be a corpse. Uh, that is not enough to hit him. I'm sorry, 11 is not enough to hit him. Huh. Amelia walks out sick of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Otto, it's your turn. <laughs> okay, first hits on little Mr. Gnome. Why doesn't that roll dice? Hang on. Hang on. Mm-hmm. There's the dice. So that's a steel cloak, but it missed, looks like. Steel cloak, yeah, it missed. Man, these are tricky little buggers. His, uh, yeah, Otto's scarf actually, like, l- like turns to steel and lashes out at the gnome. But just, it's such a hard target to hit He as he dances uh, out of the way. But he danced out of the way of the cloak and into my morning star. God damn it. <laughs> uh, not quite so much. <laughs> As 13 is not enough. By the way, a steel cloak, for, for those of you who are a little confused, it's an instant action. It, you can only be used so many times per day. So he still has an attack action that was not high enough to hit the AC. As this bugger, this, this little hook shanks, really nimble guy. Uh, Miri, your turn. Um, well, we're going to try again with the mace here. Mm-hmm. For better or for worse. Probably for worse. Thanks for the vote of confidence, asshole. But you were right. <laughs> Nine is not enough to hit. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. The dice are not are not on your side this evening. We need green dice. Yeah. <laughs> I need I need physical dice. Uh, Hookshanks. They like me better. Hookshanks laughs. Hookshanks laughs and attempts to stab uh, Muri again, enjoying this little tit-for-tat thing going on here. And he rolls a 23. It's more like tit-for-zip. <laughs> oh, man. That's a critical again, isn't it? It is a critical. He has to roll to confirm. He does not confirm. Oh, thank fucking Christ. So he does three points of damage to you. Okay. Oh god, that was fucking. Four, yeah, yeah. Kukuris only have one d three damage, but they have an eighteen to twenty crit range. Four, five, six, and what what damage did he do? Uh, he did uh, three points because max damage on an unconfirmed crit. All right, 
Arlen, your turn. I'm just gonna, you know, keep. It's gonna um, work one of these days, Sib. I, I promise. I, I, I hope. Curse you! Curse you, brother! Why are you not letting things go my way? There we go. That's enough to hit. That's enough to hit, even with the penalty. That is, uh, uh, as the, the arrow slams into Hookshanks. Um, and he is not looking good. This one, uh, actually, like, hits his other shoulder. So now he has two of your crossbow bolts, one in each shoulder. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I don't know if you noticed, I changed to green dice. <laughs> <laughs> they seem to be working so much better. I, I think the neon green dice. Green. <laughs> you can't be my color. I That's my GM color. <laughs> no, no, no. I've heard about the neon green dice. You know. I'm not allowing you to be the only one with neon green dice. <laughs> Giggles. Giggles uh, uh, makes another attack swing towards uh, Otto with his flail. Um, and, and Chris, you know, you don't he, even bother rolling. We know you need Chris. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps laughing. <laughs> That's not enough to hit. That's a 12. That is not a crit in any way, shape, or form as it bounces off your shield. Um, and now we're back up to Amelia again. Yay. Let's see if this shade of Dice works. Real quick question: mm-hmm. If they roll a critical fail, mm-hmm. could against someone with armor, could it just like, like as a ranged attack, could it just bounce off the armor and hit them? Uh, possible. They they would actually roll. Uh, they would actually those two in particular would actually draw a fumble card and have a nasty oh, okay. effect. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh. So Amelia, you switched to green dice. <laughs> Did absolutely jack and shit. <laughs> so the green die rolled a seven. Not enough yeah, to hit. Yeah, you tried, you tried to avoid the neon and that didn't really work for you. I can't. <laughs> I don't think Go on, is. go on, switch him. Switch him. Alright, so the, the bolt hits the, the door for him again. You just can't quite hit this guy, but he looks like he's he's really hurt. Um, uh, Otto, your turn, sir. Alright, like a pissed off snake. Quote goes to the gnome again. But you can't even see the numbers on those; they're just black. Auto, auto rolls shadow and seven. It's a twenty. For those of you who are listening to the podcast, uh, we have a uh, virtual dice rolling here. He changed the die to black, but the numbers are black. So all we saw was like shadows just roll across the screen. <laughs> Uh, 13 is not enough to hit with a steel cloak. Okay, warning star on the... No. Uh, 17 is enough to hit the gnome, actually. And you do 9 points of damage. Dice are weird again. Like, what's showing a 2, but the macro shows I rolled a 5. Yeah. Well, that's that's alright. That's it. We're gonna go by what the macro says. Uh, unless it says zero, in which case that makes no sense. Um, but you, your morning star whacks him in the back of the head. This slippery motherfucker finally danced his last step. Good. Yay! Miri, you're suddenly not engaged anymore. Awesome. Um, we're gonna pick up the kid that's in front of, uh, What's his the, the ugly green, ugly green dude? Yeah, that one. All right, I'm gonna let you know. So the kid is crouched down, like huddled in a little ball uh, on the floor, crying. A couple of things to let you know. One, it is since it's on the it since the child is on the ground crying, it's not really a penalty to try and strike giggles um or around them or, or you know through them, but trying to grab the kid will invoke an attack of opportunity from giggles. Because it's right next to him. While you try and grab it, he will have a chance to attack you. Okay. Um, These are the dangerous decisions. Yeah, well, the kid matters more to me than, than attacking him, so... I understand. Alright, uh, so you're going to do that? Yeah. He is going to try and make an attack to hit you. And that is a 25 versus AC. You need to switch to some new dice, mister. The- yeah, you change your dice color it's, right no, now. No, it's my favorite color. No. <laughs> Leave me alone. Your face. 
<laughs> oh man. Um. So he does eight points of damage. It says five. Oh yeah, plus three for strength. Oh, fuck. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm unconscious. Down. I had three. Right, so I you had go. Three HP left. So basically, uh, Muri goes to pick up the child and gets hit, and then I would say, as, as Muri falls unconscious, maybe, like, tries to, like, falls shielding the child. Yeah. So, like, that. All this right, but, better not be another fucking gnome. But Muri is unconscious, um, and in the negatives. Hookshanks is dead Shanks. Arlen, your turn. And since Muri is unconscious on the floor, there is no penalty to your attack roll. Because they're not considered engaged. Or even dating at this point. God, I hope not. Seems like an asshole. Mm, my bad. Uh, yes, he is engaged with you. Though it's kind of a weird thing in the sense that Arlen sh- can't even see you from where she is. Like, her shot has to come through here, if that makes sense, right? Where you are, there's no penalty, if that makes sense. Like, I, 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 I like rules. Because rules are there to to try and make things make sense. But I am all for common sense. And common sense tells me that technically you're engaged diagonally. But since she has to shoot through the door frame anyway, you would not penalize this shot. The way I visualize it is like he's kind of got, he's turned towards you. And so I'm shooting in his back. Sure. But you're not a rogue. And it didn't matter because a seven is not enough to hit. As it sails past him into the wall and thunks into the door uh, um, on the far wall. I had a real quick question. So, Squee, you know that thing on my back? Did we ever come up with damage for that? Oh. And can it operate while I am unconscious? Uh, I would say no. You have to be able to direct it. And I'd say 1d3 at, at first level. Okay. I right, uh... Giggles. Wait, uh, wait, wait. I still get a move action, don't I? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. And, and so, since the doorway is finally um, okay. clear, I'm going to step into the room. Okay. On top of the dead gnome. <laughs> well, I'll walk over the dead gnome and maybe take an extra step and kind of stomp on his head and Got go. Uh, <laughs> with, with the prosthetic foot? <laughs> yeah. So uh, a metal foot. You guys just hear like a, a question. Do you wear like shoes? Yeah, so, yeah. Like, yeah it's just... So you guys just hear like uh, like a, almost like a metal thunk as she steps on his head. Yep. All right. So you're now engaging giggles. All right. Um. Okay. And as part of a move action, if you choose to drop the crossbow as part of a move action, you can draw another weapon, but you'd have to drop the crossbow to do so. Okay, yeah, I'll drop the crossbow and pull out my morning star. Okay. Uh, it is now Giggles' turn. Ooh, Giggles is surrounded on all sides. Um, he can't, he could have taken, just and just so you know for the future, Sib, he could have taken an attack of opportunity, you going there, because you went here and then here. So that he could have, but he doesn't have combat reflexes. He already took an attack of opportunity against Miri, so you're fine. Yeah, yeah that's why I went ahead and did it. Okay, so yeah, just making sure we're we're on the same page here. Uh, he is going to think that Otto is still the greater threat uh, and make an attack roll against him. Otto, this is a 15 versus AC. As a miss, as Giggles is now, he has his uh, attention distracted by Arlen, who is now behind him. He's fighting people on both sides now, and his attention is not what it could be. Uh, Amelia. Yes. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to throw more lightning at Giggles. Okay, so you're going to do Jolt at Giggles? Yes. Alright. Okay, look. Just because the dice are neon green and happen to be rolling well does not mean <laughs> that there's something to do with the color. Uh, that's a hit. Please roll damage. Thank Christ. That's an 18, so that is a hit. (laughs) Two points of damage. All right. Giggle Rooney here. Taking the good old two points. This is the first time he's been hit in a long time. As it kind of 
scorches uh, his left, his right side. All right, um, Otto, your turn. I'm going to eat the attack of opportunity and try to okay. cure um, Neary. Wait, how far into the negatives is your health? Oh, you're freaking dying anyway. No, I better do it. <laughs> I, I was going to say, by where I'm positioned, doesn't that give you a flanking bonus? N- well, not really. Um, you're not a rogue. so. Uh, but, now, a flanking bonus does count if you're attacking, but he's curing. No, no I meant if he was attacking. She's it saying, why waste your time bonus. healing this bird and kill it? Dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is correct. Since, since, uh, since he is flanked on both sides, you get a uh, plus two to your attack roll. <laughs> I just oh, well, wanted maybe, to point that out. Maybe I should just take him out then. I was wondering if that was if flanking was going to be a thing. How how injured is this guy? I forget how many times he's been hit so far. Uh, he does not. He looks like he's still got quite a bit of life in him. He has not been hit that much. Okay. okay. And how badly is Miri dying? Uh, she's on the floor unconscious with a nasty uh, uh, flail wound. Um, you roll me a perception check. Um, Murray, how far in the negatives are you? Uh, how much damage did he do to me last time? Uh, hang on, let me look real quick. (laughs) He did eight. Yeah, I have negative five hit points. Negative five hit points, and what's your constitution score? My constitution score total, not the bonus? Yeah, not the bonus. Okay, I was gonna be like, oh, I'm dead. Uh, um, it's like a 12, I think. Okay, so yeah, she looks really bad. She's like halfway to permanent death. Hmm, one sec. <clears throat> He's making a pros and cons list. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to start with this. Since it's a bonus action. Makes sense. Uh, an 18 is enough to hit, especially with your plus two to attack. Um, and that does three points of damage. It says five again. Things just crazy. I'll go with the macro. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so um, three points of damage. Okay, your 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 scarf whips out at him, doing uh, three points of damage to him. Cloak. I'm sorry, your cloak. <laughs> <laughs> um, this isn't Harry Potter. He doesn't have a scarf. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I was like, scarf. I don't want a scarf, man. <laughs> he bloody well should. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hit the guy. Oh. oh man, that's that's not a hit. That's a six versus AC. So you you go to hit him and you miss. Miri, uh, roll me a Constitution check, please. So basically, a D twenty and add your Constitution modifier, which I believe is a plus one, and try and get over a ten. No, wait, 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 wait. Uh, plus one, but you had a minus five. So actually, roll me. Just roll me a D twenty. We're gonna have to subtract four from your roll, and you gotta get over a ten. No. All right, so you lose one more point of HP. And it's Arlen's turn. I am going to swing at this guy. Okay. Add, uh, and you, you're going to add two to this check. So that is 13, 14, 15. Not enough to hit him. <sighs> and I forgot um, Amelia's jolt. I forgot the, the penalty to... to, to Two decks, but I, it already went. I'm just gonna let it lie. It's good, um, but unfortunately, yeah, that 15 is not enough to hit him. Uh, and it's Giggles' turn. Uh, Otto was the last one to hit him. Giggles just starts laughing. He's enjoying. It's like he is having the time of his life as he flings his flail at Otto. For 16 versus AC. That's a miss. Okay. Uh, back up to Amelia. I'm gonna do the same song. Actually, no. I'm, I'm gonna move from... Not move forward. Gotta move to this one. And then I can move forward. I'm gonna stand over this asshole. And then I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Throw lightning. Oops. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> the lightning doesn't hit. But 
but A for effort, my friend. Yeah. Otto, your turn, sir. All right, I'm going to heal him then. Thank fucking Christ. Take the attack of opportunity. That is a nine. It's not a hit. So he 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 goes to swing at you as you bend down, and it's just. Whiff. There's a lot of missing going on right now. It's a welcome to level one, everyone. <laughs> Amelia, don't worry. One day you're gonna grow up big and strong and just murder people. Huge heal, max healing, uh, for nine points. Okay, so I have I was at negative six, and now I have plus three. Correct. And uh, you are back in the fight. Look at that. Uh, he's already taken an attack of opportunity, so you could even stand up without invoking. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you mean provoking? Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah, know in- who he's gonna invoke. Excuse yeah. me. Um, I don't. I, I. I don't recall you being the god of this fictional world. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to invoke a curse. <laughs> So you can stand up. Um, that would take a movement action, and then you still have a quick action, a standard action. And the child is still underneath you, just sobbing. Okay, we're gonna move the kid. Okay. Uh, what would you like to do? He can't attack you, so you can basically do what you'd like. Uh, throw him out the window. No, I'm gonna like back up. <laughs> Chunk, baby chunking. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> straight up baby chunking. Then- New Olympic sport, don't you know? I'm going to move back here with him. Okay. We'll put him over here. Okay. Uh, so that's Mary's turn. Arlen! Um. Do-do-do. So, I'm going to try doing um, Ray of Enfeeblement. Okay. So, I have... Um, so I have to make a ranged attack, and if I ex- succeed, I'll tell you what I do. But right. my ranged attack, so I'm within 30 feet, so I'm just going to roll, like, point-blank shot. No other damage. And I did not succeed. You did not succeed, unfortunately. No. So that was... Awesome! Mm-hmm. All right, Uh, so you cast a spell at him, but it does not seem to affect him, and it's a Giggles' turn. Giggles is, uh, he didn't even notice you were casting a spell at him. Yeah. So he's going to take another attack at uh, at Otto. Uh, Very upset that he seemed to have missed that last one that he should have hit, is what he feels. Um, And that rage makes a 23 versus AC is a hit. Eyes are hits, right? Uh, Tizer hits. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Tizer hits. All right. Uh, so that's going to be 1D plus 3. Uh, minimum damage, 4 points. Low roller, low roller. See, green die aren't everything. I'm not convincing anyone, am I? No. As, like... Uh, like there are like so much green on this map right now. Uh, Amelia, it's your turn. Same song and dance. Oh no! <laughs> it's a critical one. Um, please roll to confirm. So roll again. Same same attack roll. Amelia, that uh, succeeds. That would have hit him. So you don't have to draw from the fumble deck. It's just a miss. <laughs> oh, that sucks. I mean, it's it suck as bad as it like could have, but there, there's you your hit. Enjoyed, I hope you guys have enjoyed this podcast. I'm running off all my players. I don't think there'll be an episode two because everyone's going to hate me, not the dice. Uh, no, I blame you. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a Thanksgiving is going to be horrible now. <laughs> No, that's not a hit, unfortunately. 11 versus AC is not enough two. to hit. Uh, yeah, 13 is still not enough to hit. Okay. I am sad to say. Uh, Weary, your turn. Um, I am going to um, take the, the wooden structure off my back. Okay. And um, set it on the floor. Okay. Uh, it does have four little pig-like feet in it 
balances there fairly, you know, well. Um, and then uh, buzzing fills the room. And uh, from a tiny opening towards the very bottom of it, um, bees pour out. <laughs> and it's just a cloud of bees. And uh-huh. um, she sort of waves them half-heartedly towards the orc. And then turns back to the child. Okay. Um, give me a second here. So that counts as a swarm of angry buzzing bees. Yeah, you were very close with the birdhouse. It's actually a bee house. It's a bee house, right? Okay. That's sweet. You know, because it's, it's probably full of honey. 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 <laughs> oh. Uh, but uh. So, um, I'm actually amending that because I looked it up real quick. Uh, if the bees attack, which they'd be able to do this turn, it would be 1d6. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is actually a thing? <laughs> Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, bees are a swarm, which mm-hmm. means they don't actually roll to attack. They just do damage. Um, awesome. But uh, basically an attack against them is an attack against all of them, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So roll me 1d6, please, as your bees swarm giggles. Uh, that's going to be Amelia, sorry. That's fine. Uh, five points of damage. Okay. Uh, as the bees just start stinging him all over, um, you guys, uh, Otto, Amelia, and Arlen, just see a cloud of bees unleashed from the small little house and attack Giggles. Not you, just Giggles. Okay. Uh, so it's Arlen, my turn? Arlen's turn? Yes, correct. Try another attack. Uh, 16 plus 2 because of flanking is enough to hit. Okay. And I don't know why this did not come up. Um, I think it's a D8. Damage? Yeah. Yeah, D8 yeah, plus your strength. D8 is uh, morning star. Plus my strength. Mm-hmm. Which I think is 0. Oh, no, plus 1. All right, so 8 points of damage. Um, he is not looking good. That 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 hit like looks like it it um it may have broken his collarbone. Yay! Because his arm is now hanging lower than it should be naturally. He does not look good at all. Giggles. Uh, uh, um. Whew. Giggles can't disengage <laughs> he could take a five foot step but anywhere he takes it he's going to be engaged by someone <laughs> mm-hmm. oh that's hilarious um and he if he runs he's going to have to take two attacks of opportunity he just looks around and, <laughs> and makes one last attack swinging his flail at Arlen who just damaged him and roll 16 versus your AC misses Okay, uh, that that flail misses, and it is now Amelia's turn. My God, you guys like chest him. You are all positioned perfectly so that he cannot take a five foot step to get away from you. <laughs> I'm guessing that doesn't hit, Amelia. No, that lightning does not hit. I'm just gonna go to sleep since apparently I'm useless right now. <laughs> oh, you're not useless. Okay, okay, to set up the scene, I am sitting cross legged on the bed, and Alora is horizontal, sprawled out, diagonal across the rest of the bed. She's got her face down. <laughs> Amelia, you're gonna be able to cast Fireball one day. It's gonna be amazing. Just. Don't leave. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to being a level one freaking sorcerer. So, are you, are you breaking up with me on the first session? <laughs> I'm Auto. sorry, man. I, I, you spoiled me when you brought kid in at level nine. I just can't handle this. Otto, it is your turn, sir. Uh, Sixteen versus AC plus two because of the uh, flanking bonus is enough to hit seven damage. How do you want to do this? As in, this is the last hit of the combat. How do you want to Fucking do this? Fucking thank God. How about I, I clobber his arm straight off his socket, and he just bleeds to the floor? Oh my God. 
<laughs> okay. So you hit you hit the same spot where Arlen hit. No, noticing that Arlen did real damage there, that the arm was hanging limply, you strike it again, and the arm just is torn off by the impact. And Giggles falls to the floor with blood spurting out. And you can see he's on the floor, his legs bent at an odd angle, staring up at nothing, going... <laughs> As he dies. Congratulations, you've survived your first combat of Pathfinder. Possibly only because we have two healers in the party. Probably. Yes, yes, congratulations. And to be fair, I was rolling like a champ. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> stopped <were>. that. <laughs> I, I think we should make it a house rule where um, the, uh, the, the, the GM is not allowed to use neon green. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> no, it's my color. You cannot take my color. For- I'm supposed to be the GM. <laughs> <laughs> it's four against one here. No, um, really well done, guys. That fight was difficult uh, because um, y- y- the alarm was raised more or less. Um, tough fight. You won. Everyone's alive. We're going to go ahead and uh, stop the session here for now. Is that good, everyone? Yes. And the next session we'll pick up where we left off. Okay. All right. Yay, our heroes survived their first rather grueling combat. You know, I debated whether or not I should trim some of that combat down because it did take a while. However, I kind of felt that it was important to see it all in all its glory um, because that way when they raise up and level and they start getting better, you can see how much better they're getting because let's face it, level one, that's kind of how combat goes. However, that might not be the right move. If you guys as listeners think, man, he really could have trimmed that down. That took forever. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Um, you can let me know in the comments on YouTube, in the uh, uh, podcast. Of course, you can let me know in the comments. Um, let me know what you guys think. We're more than welcome to change some of the ways we edit if everyone thinks it would make it a better podcast so until then everyone i'd like to thank you as always and we will see you next monday <laughs>